What's up, everybody? This is episode 17 of the Pitside Podcast, and I have to tell you, I think this is one of our best episodes. We've got HVAC genius Mike Schultz on the show with us, as well as G-Force Racing League Ironman Greg Boydell. Quite frankly, we talked to them so much, you're not going to get a whole lot more, but they were some great interviews, so uh, let's get started. Welcome to the Pit Side Podcast, where we discuss the latest news and developments in the G-Force Racing League, as well as other racing news inside and out of iRacing. Now here's your hosts, the a Outlaw, Preston Cranmer, and Roger the Bassman Craig. Yeah, so uh, welcome everybody. As I said, this is episode 17. Um, been a been a pretty crazy week with with the holidays going on and and lots still lots of racing um so as you might be able to tell the lighting is very different i'm wearing a different shirt um we had to yeah we had to we yeah from the from the interviews you'll see those in a few minutes but uh we had to split recording across days because it got too late roger was very committed and agreed to wear his dirty shirt uh a second day so (laughs) we appreciate that <laughs> yeah. So uh so anyway, it's it's we've had a good time. This has been a, a fun week. Got lots of guys that don't get to run the matinees usually got to run them cuz they might have been off work and such. And I was one of those. I ran a couple of them. So uh yeah. it's, it's been a lot of fun. Pretty uh pretty laid back, but been a good week. Been a great week and uh it's and it's a great new year. So what's happened between uh, the interviews and now is that it's 2021. And uh, so uh, a whole new outlook, um, you know, looking for better things in the world and uh, uh, better things in our league. Like this has been the major developments since we recorded the other day. So we'll, we'll get into that later. But, uh, you know, we do want to uh, bring uh, Mike Schultz. It was a, a good interview and probably the best man cave I've seen uh, on our show yet. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, let's take a look at that interview and uh, we'll be back to talk to you here in a few minutes. And we're here with uh, one of our special guys that's been around for a while, Mike Schultz. Uh, how are you doing tonight, Mike? I'm doing great, Roger. How are you doing? Awesome. And I, I, other than maybe the um, the Icon uh, uh, sim, uh, sim racing uh, backdrop that we had, that's got to be the best backdrop that we've had in an interview. That's uh, it's awesome. I'm feeling pretty comfy by that fire. Uh, yeah, it's it's as fake as can be, but I appreciate it. <laughs> this it's uh, this whole place has morphed into something that's kind of gotten out of control at this point. But my wife's happy so I'm it, not inside. Oh, so you are? This is a, you're not in the basement. <laughs> no, sir. This is a this is an outside shed. So it's a sixty by twenty four with a two story. So my rig's upstairs in my office and just kind of turned into a bar. Yeah, it says it's. I don't know if you can read that, Roger. It says Schultz Shed right there. Well, I saw that, but I just thought that was like a man cave name or something. But you know, so that's that's kind of cool because uh, Preston, uh, a big deal for him uh, for Christmas, got a shed. Is your sixty by twenty four? Mine's fourteen by Preston? twenty. That's plenty. Oh, oh it's yeah, still it's still impressive. <laughs> but sixty by twenty four, you could have uh, you could have a few. Uh, Real real life cars in the, the other room there. Yeah, yeah. It was supposed to be for lawnmowers and stuff, but so I ended up having to buy another shed for that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's kick ass, that's kick ass, man. So uh, it's uh, looking good. So um, you know, we know you you you've been in the league for uh, not right in the beginning. Maybe at the second season you came in, I think. But uh, you've been around for a while. Um, but I know you also did real world stuff. So tell us a little bit about that. So I started out in a street stock, um, ran, uh, Canandaigua Atlanta legends, um, is where I started. That was my home track and that's where my family grew up racing. Um, and that's really when I went to graduate college, my, my deal was my father said, if you graduate college, I'll get you a race car. So that's the way we went. And, uh, that's what we did for a little while. And, uh, you know, it's like everything else. It's a lot of money to go racing week in, week out. And and it really comes down to how much time do you want to spend at it. Then you get a family. So I had it there, and it sat for a long time. And then I had a guy come to me and said, hey, I want to swap uh, your 
your street stock for my sportsman car? And I went, yeah, kind of a no-brainer, minus the motor and stuff in it, because um, we had, again, racers are dumb. We spend way too much money on motors and the rest of it. And uh, so we did it anyway, and I ended up taking the sportsman car out three times with that. And uh, there was success with it. I mean, we went to Canada for the rookie series, and there was two races left in the season, so we finished second the first night. And then we won the next night out with it. And then I said, hey, wow. this is really good. Let's go to Oswego for Super Dirt Week for the first first race ever there. Somebody should have taken a brick and beat me in the head because that was the dumbest idea ever. <laughs> that racetrack was beyond horrible. But I was there. <laughs> but, uh, How did you do? I, I, dude, we were just there. We, we, we got there. We unloaded. As soon as I went on the racetrack, we had brake issues. Brake pads fell out of the thing. Just, it, it was rough. Bars were beat up. I, we just rode around, basically, is how it ended up. We, like, one race, we started 15, finished 15. Like, it was just basically follow the leader and try to survive. It was it was bad. Um, but I've I've been fortunate to do other things. Like, uh, um, I've gotten to go with the Hogue family. I don't know if you guys know them from like Dutch Hogue and that. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to college with Alex. I actually traveled with him. And uh, I got to drive his 358 car a few different times. Uh, we did that up uh, Canada Way, uh, Quebec. There, we did a couple of races there. Or wherever. I, I'm going to say the wrong name, but it doesn't matter. A few races with him with that. And we're basically, I would just get in the car and start and park it because there wasn't enough cars and dirt was paying crazy money to start. So. We got two cars. Let's start and park it. So I did that. Um, I had one opportunity to at Dundee where they had a sprint car out, and they're letting guys. They want to get a series going, so they had a bunch of guys come over and test one. So I got to do that, which was honestly really cool. <laughs> if I could have a sprint car today, I'd go get one. Um, I just don't do it with family. Um, but that was by far the coolest car I've ever driven. That's and what awesome. was was that a three sixty or? It was a three hundred five, um, yeah. but but I, it was just crazy. I, I, so I was the only one that didn't spin it out, but I was probably the one that was driving it the slowest. But I was getting faster, and the faster I got it, I'd go, I go, I'm I'm gonna hurt myself. So or I'm gonna wreck this thing that's not mine. My best best just to park it. So that's what I did. But it was fun. It was a, it was a riot. Yeah. They have a, at a uh, at Ashwika, they have a two seater. And that's been uh, my, uh, you know, it's one of my, you know, 50 things to do before I die. That's that's one of the top ones. And uh, almost happened, uh, well, not this past season because of COVID, but the season before at the uh, um, the Canadian Nationals. And uh, the, the, the young guy I follow, Dylan Westbrook, who's one of the hot shoes in North America, uh, he was going to drive me around. And, uh, you know, I wanted to go until I almost puked. You know, I wanted that right. experience. Absolutely. And, uh, it, it didn't happen, so hopefully it'll happen this coming season. But yeah, that's that's. But just to sit in one ride, uh, so if you've driven one, that's that's wicked. It's just the the crazy part to it is that it it almost drives better the faster it's going. So like the the more you're going, you're like, my God, it's easier to drive. Like how far can I drive this thing in there? <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Downforce, man. <laughs> I forget those wings, those modifieds. They're just big wide cars, you know. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, you were in, a, I think, the first race we held uh, with the uh, the, the uh, 358s, um, and uh, you were in that session. And, and your remark was, this thing handles, like, it, the motion, they, they, they nailed it, according to you. They really did. I mean, that, that weird death wobble or whatever they all want to call that, when you're rolling slow, that's what they do. Um, it's, it's not really fun sitting in the car, but that's what they do. Um, and when you can, I mean, really when they can feel it lean over and do everything it's doing inside the car and, and the view out the window and everything else, I, to me, I think they nailed it. So I, I yeah. just phenomenal job on, you know, part. it's funny and it's just kind of all coming back to me now, but I believe it's Oswego Speedway where they have a big, maybe it's a 200 lap or something every year. Maybe it's not quite that many and they do a parade through town, right? Yes. And yes, I sir. remember watching that. I think it was. Maybe not this past year. I don't know if they did it this year. But when they were doing it, they were showing the video of the, the, the big blocks driving through town. And I remember watching the wheels just like they, I thought it was going to come apart. 
Right. And I was yeah. like, something's wrong with that car. But now that you say that, it, it's it's it just kind of clicked. That's funny. It's just what they do. Honestly, even down to the brake noise that they have in those cars when you're going around, that is a it's legitimately the noise that they make when they're when you're on the brake in them. It, it's neat. I mean, they they nailed it. So yeah, you know, it, and, normally and, that. You, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, and I think I said it on a podcast before. Like I wasn't a big fan. You know, I'm a sprint car guy, and uh, uh, they would come in Tosh Weekend a few times here, and I'd say, yeah, okay, they're fine, but you know, but after I've driven one, they are so much fun to drive. Like I can't wait to see them on the track now. So it's kind of like going in reverse here. I racing has got me. Uh, wanting to uh, get back and watch them race now because it's uh, it's such a great it's a great vehicle and and great competition how great is it for iRacing to get you to do that right like and not even not just you but the people they brought to iRacing because of it and now all of a sudden they're saying hey we really want to go see that that's a no i mean that was a win-win for dirt to me i I mean yeah Yeah. it's neat it sure is well and so i'm like for me i they don't they don't run big blocks around here i'm far enough south where it's not a common occurrence and they run they run the like uh imc or what is it imcas and the umps pretty frequently um so i was always kind of pushed back like well we don't need big blocks nobody cares about big blocks but now that they're out there for one i can obviously see how many people wanted them and i understand why now because they it's a completely (laughs) different experience now the ump modified is the best car on iRacing but these are still lots of fun I might have to go. <laughs> I thought I thought I would get a rise out of Roger. Ro- Roger, I don't know what just happened to Roger. Usually he has a big reaction, I, I was, but I think now he's just trying to deflate the the meme out of this now by not saying anything. I don't know. No, I just, uh, you know what? The proof's in the pudding. You know, yeah. uh, we lost the UMP stuff for car count, and now we we bring in these uh, the the dirt modified, and uh, all of a sudden now we've got I think we got seventy five new members or something uh you know on that unlimited side uh that we've got to indoctrinate it, it, and then plus all the guys that are uh you know cu- coming over from uh the uh outlaw side so uh, that's truly popular and uh, you know we right out of the box three divisions and we're getting full car counts for all three it's just uh it's crazy man it's just crazy and it's only going to get better i mean street stocks without fenders really yeah it's a street stock and a sprint card hybrided together. Nah, I'm talking about your UMPs. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I don't need this. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna change the subject a little bit. So yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, I need to because I'm I'm losing losing cred here. So Mike owns or I, I believe you own it. i know it's at least a family business schultz heating and cooling i see the uh see the sign back there but I, i'm gonna give him a personal recommendation at this point and he knows i'm gonna do this but i guess it was about two weeks ago i was having some problems with my heat pump right and so i had done a wrap for for mike and i remembered like probably about two days too late um that I had put a giant Ream logo on the side of his car. That's what he asked me for. And it it hit me. I was like, that it was freezing up terrible. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, my cousin's husband, hopefully he's not going to watch this. He actually asked me about this last week. I He works in HVAC too. And I had called him and asked him. And he was like, oh, I don't know. It sounds like you, you got a board going bad. You need to get somebody out there. And I'm thinking, that just doesn't seem right. Because I put in a smart thermostat. Anyway, long story. So I, I texted Mike, and I was like, look, man, this is what I got going on. This is the model number for my heat pump. And I installed this smart thermostat, and ever since then, when it gets cold out, it freezes up, and it just won't cool the house right. Five minutes later, Mike sends back, set your, your uh, compressor temperature threshold to this, and you're going to have to let it thaw out before it starts heating your house again. So I did it. I waited two hours, the thing thawed out, and my house has been as warm as it's been since we moved in here ever since then. So if you're in the area, get Mike to come out and take care of your HVAC stuff. He doesn't charge a lot. He only charged me like four or $500 for the advice. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, it was completely free, and it was completely painless. And I have to be honest, I couldn't believe he was able to help me that quickly. So he, the guy knows the stuff. I just wanted to put that out there. It's personal experience. Yeah. 
you can put this on your website, Mike, whatever you want to do, but. <laughs> no, I appreciate five, it. No, I do. I appreciate it. A five minute fix. Five yeah, minute fix. That's right. You know? He can fix and, any problem you have in five minutes. It doesn't matter what. And, it, you might need a new heat pump and Mike will replace it in five minutes. You're and, <laughs> you know, never mind just the, the New York area, but uh, with COVID and everything else, everybody's virtual now, just like we are right now. You know, hook up with Mike. You could be in California. It, it, it could be Terry Landis and uh, had a problem. He could uh, uh, dial in with uh, with Mike here and he'll, he'll fix all the problems virtually. You know, the funny part is that a lot of it you can. I mean, if you just kind of got an idea of what the person has and understanding how the equipment works not that hard especially with all the diagnostic stuff they have in it now yeah yeah it's basically telling you what's wrong with it so you tell me and i say oh we'll do this yep that's it's it's true <laughs> you know it, it that reminds me i just me. downplayed myself horribly right there but just, yeah, yeah anybody can do it you don't need mike <laughs> no, no no so that, that's funny though that we're talking about that and i'm going to tell a quick story so i used to work for my father-in-law who owns a, a, a boat repair repair place so Back when I first started dating my wife, um, I worked for him on, during the summer. And we used to get, to, there were a, a handful of people who, if something was going wrong with their boat, like, they'd call you from the ramp and hold their phone up to their to their thing and say, <laughs> can you help me? And he's like, I can't hear anything. It's just noise. But they would try to get him to call. So I don't know if Mike's capable of that. Maybe you can hold your phone up to the heat pump, but. Video. Video it. There you go. So that, there you go. You need Mike, but just for, just on video. Anyway, we we can move on. I just needed to needed to yeah, get that yeah. out there. Oh, so here's a question. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, go ahead. Looking at that backdrop there, are those RC cars up on the shelf? There are. Um, yeah. Some. Uh, so there is an RC car. Um, it is the old school uh, Sprint car RC cars. Yeah, on both sides. Um, got some Dutch home cars. Tommy Baldwin senior car. It's actually the body panel here that you're seeing is off the Tommy Baldwin modified. We did a thing with him when he went to Oswego. Um, it's actually been kind of cool. So I've gotten to know them with doing stuff. Um, in in I went with Alex down in North Carolina and whatnot, and getting to meet different people. So it's kind of been neat. So I met Tommy and always liked loved the fact that he was just an independent single car owner. That's what he did. And I was a huge Warburton fan. So when he was a crew chief, that was, he's my guy. So we actually did stuff with him at Watkins Glen on his cup car. So we had our logo on it and stuff. And that was really special and a lot of fun. Uh, it was when our we had our first son, Caden, our, our firstborn child. And uh, my wife and I, we went. And Tommy's a great guy. And, and it was just a lot of fun. And just trying to help the small team. You know, we're, I, I was a small team. I understand how it works. And for me to go get to do it to, at that level was huge for my little business so and i appreciate everything he did with me and uh when he was going to bring the modified down with john mckennedy to oswego i'm like hey well we i, I can do that again except for not quite as much <laughs> but uh <laughs> but uh no it, and it's been fun like pretty much we had a situation where my, my one of my dad's bucket list items was go to talladega so make phone calls do whatever and you know, they got to go in the pits and do the rest of the stuff, and it was really neat. Um, not only him, but, like, Jennifer Joe Cobb and stuff. We always went to Eldora for the truck race, and we actually ended up camping right next to her, which just turned into a party from, you know, our spot down to theirs with just crew members and whoever the hell showed up. But uh, it, it turned into craziness. But um, it was always fun. We went to the truck race every year. And talking about, like, the big blocks there. Watching those big blocks run around Eldora was amazing. The trucks stink, but the big blocks were cool. <laughs> yeah, it's that's a novelty act. It, it yeah, it. But it, you know, again, it, it was something special. Like we got, it, it's like it's like this league, right? Like you get to meet people, and you then all of a sudden you come in every weekend, week out, and you get to talk and see the same people. That's how cool that is. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like community, that, that's and that's right. how it was there is we looked forward to every year going. So now that it's canceled, we're like, well, now, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. So, and, and I also want to point out, and and Mike mentioned this to me uh, prior to, to starting the record here, he's got a trophy back there um, to, to his right, I guess, uh, where he won the Pro oh, Late yeah. Model Division two seasons ago, narrowly eked out the best driver in the field um, for the championship, came <laughs> down to the last race. And I think, based on what we were talking about, neither of us have raced since then. Uh, no, I don't. I don't need to. I was too devastated to come back. And but those are awesome plaques, by the way. Yeah, like, and, by far awesome. And he does a great job of those. Yeah, they're they're cool, and I'm I'm hoping to have yeah. one one day. Um, hopefully, Mike doesn't keep me from my dream. I'm just gonna I'm looking, wherever it is. If you can just boost my points up just that close to him, then that's all I need. Well, unfortunately, I don't know if you know this, but I I write the uh, points keeping software, so it won't happen again. <laughs> Fair enough. I just look, I just look for a participation trophy. <laughs> yeah, at this point, the only one I'm ever gonna get. Like literally, that was the first season, first one. I'm like, yeah. yes, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those yeah. those cars and me just don't get along. I. Believe me, and I'm sure most of the guys are going to sit here and listen to this. I'm sorry. I'm sure I drove through you because I don't know how to drive those things. They're horrible. They, they're hard. To, well, and that's the thing, especially when we run sprint cars, and even now the the, the big blocks and stuff. The cars are small. You can you can feel your the corners, but no, yeah. those things are so huge. You don't know where the right rear is. You're dragging the wall all the way but, around. But Mike, Mike, you got to admit better than UMPs. Oh, son of a oh way better. I mean, those things are. They're not even race cars. All right. Well, on that note, we appreciate you coming on. Mike. No, actually, I have one last question before we let you go. I ask everybody this, so I have to ask you too. Oh a, and 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 I, you've raced several different divisions, so you can pick from whichever one you want or whatever. No cop out answers here, but <laughs> you you finish your drink first. Uh, who is your biggest rival in G Force Racing Leagues? Man, I you know rivals are just guys that really dislike me. Because I'm thinking John, 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 I think might be the guy that dislikes me the now, most. Now, we have a few Johns, so I'm going to... John, he- was it Hyden? like saying Hyde. I know. Hi- yeah. So, John Hyde. So, I, him and I, for whatever reason, seem to get really close to each other. And then I probably dump him. I don't know. But either way, he might be it. He might be it. Okay. Yeah. Was, yeah. Some Some guys pick the guys they don't get along with, and some guys pick pick people that they you know they just find themselves on track sounds like you were able to pick both in in one guy here so oh i got them all in one shot yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 i yeah. mean yeah. So, you know the nice part to him though i gotta i gotta give him props though because whenever we had a disagreement like i said hey let's just chat about it and that's what we've done you know so i give him yeah. props for that that that's that's all i asked for like you can send me a text message and tell me that it, i'm a bulldozer or whatever and I just say, okay. But when you want to talk about it, I'm in. You know? To me, that's great. That's that's what I I think. Nothing against anybody else. I think that's what we need some more in this league would help. Just to get guys to talk. And then maybe we find out, hey, we're not all that bad. Yeah, We're not just that crazy, weird guy in that car over there. It's, we're, it's, we're, all, yeah, we're all human. It's the one thing I think that makes it feel very realistic when you're able to do that. Because it's intense when you're racing with a guy. But if you can get off the track and it just let it go, it's mm-hmm. it's it's just like being at the racetrack, right? I mean, it's it's oh. it, you leave it after the checker flag flies, it's done with. But the problem is it's virtual, and you don't always get to have the conversation, or you don't get to make that snide remark that you can both just laugh at a few minutes later. And so sometimes the tension hangs on a little bit longer than it actually would too, because there's not that. And I'm going to call it face to face, but there's not that level of communication that you'd get, you know, if, when your trailer's next to the other guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a little less fun when you can't throw something at somebody or do something. <laughs> fun. Yeah, but that, that's uh, one of the purposes of uh, you know the uh, the podcast is like bringing people like you on, putting putting like the human side, the the, the face and the, the personality, uh, so people get to know each other a little better and. Um, I think that helps along the way too, you know. Oh, I absolutely so. agree. Absolutely agree. Absolutely. But yeah, I appreciate what you guys are doing. I mean, really, this is this has been a a huge league. I, I when I joined it, I didn't really know what I was doing, but 
I'm growing along I with you guys. Still trying to figure it out. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, Roger and I don't know what we're doing either, so it's all good. <laughs> well, at least I, at least I'm not headed in the same direction. <laughs> I got to give you a, a huge shout out, you know, uh, in the early days, uh, you know, like, like right now we have, we, we've got a significant number of sponsors, which is great, but you were one of the very first on board. First of all, with, um, I had the name in Whispering Pines right, yeah. when you uh, did that. And then you've been uh, with your business, uh, uh, you've been sponsoring the league for uh, the last two or three seasons. So um can't thank you enough because it, it, it's, that that's the stuff that really makes this stuff tick, and uh, well, really you know, appreciate I, it. I I appreciate it. I mean, it's a, it's a shout out, and literally, I you know, I have people that come on and watch it, and it, it, it's it's all if you can get into a league and you like it and you can get it to grow, that's great. That's what I like to see. So hopefully, you can keep keep get, getting it bigger and more broadcast and the rest of it. So that's yeah. the plan. Um, I know watching the broadcast tonight were Wednesday nights. So this is Street Stocks and the Elite, and uh, started real like the racing is is exciting or more exciting than what you see at the track on some nights. Like it's just uh, it's incredible racing, and uh, you know, it's kudos to to guys like yourself that uh, keep coming out every week and uh, getting better and better, and uh, it, it really makes for some some great racing. I appreciate it. No, it, it, it is fun, it, and that's it. Right? It, it's my it's my time away from work. Right? If I can, I come home, yeah. see the kids, we hang out, we do all that stuff, and then it's hey, I can go race and spend a couple hours not thinking about anything other than virtually racing. So, sure. so this is this this shed you're in. Is, how far is it from the house? Is it attached? I, I, is it like no, that? I can throw a stone, hit it. Yeah, I don't know, the twenty feet or so. So, so it, I'm going to ask this. I'm going to ask this for Preston's benefit. Um, <laughs> so, so, so well, he's got he's got the shed. He's talking about taking his rig out there. You said you got your rig upstairs in this building. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, do you keep it heated the whole time, or like? Because I'm thinking this heating, cooling, it wouldn't be as radical where where Preston is. But uh, Roger, he's an HVAC there? guy. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> He he I got a, a spare yeah. laying around. <laughs> so so I, that is actually hilarious because I've started out with pretty much every heater you can think of for out here, and this was just an ambiance one. But I if I, I we've had wall mount heaters when it started. I was running it with a generator outside, power and stuff. Now it's got power to it. Um, we have a furnace upstairs now. Plus I have mini split systems that I'm. It's fun because I can play with it, right? So I can kind of put stuff in and try it and see what I think. Or I figure if I'm going to sell it to somebody, I kind of want to know what yep. it work, how it works myself, right? That's yep. what I always tell everybody. And they kind of look at you like, yeah, okay, sure you yeah. did. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I really have. So, so um, you keep heating in there all the time then, I guess, being yeah. heating. Yeah. I, I mean, so I use a mini split system most of the time. Um, I, I kind of play with it for some fault codes just to play with it and try to troubleshoot stuff so I can understand some of it too. So that sometimes I break my wife. She does. Oh, I should not have said this on this, but anyway, I, but, so that's what the backup furnace is for. <laughs> we can, we can bleep some stuff if we need to. <laughs> no, just fine. let me know. <laughs> she, she knows cause she'll come in and she's like, what did you do to it? Why is the furnace running? Oh, well, I'll fix it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, that's awesome, man! But yeah, that's no, awesome. it's heated. It's heated year round, and, and like I was telling Preston, literally, normally, if I was to turn on this camera, I, I kind of move it over the other way. But this place is, has at least probably one or two people in a night, if not more. Some nights, it's just people stop. It seems to be the place to stop, and I don't have to go anywhere. And sometimes it's way late into the night, but that happens too. <laughs> That's yeah. That that's super cool, but well, I appreciate and, it. Uh, yeah, man. Can't thank you. Can't thank you enough for coming on. And uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while. We've talked about bringing you on, and uh, um, really glad we did. And uh, look forward to seeing you on the track. I think I, I think you're out there this afternoon in the matinee race. Uh, I did. I, was, uh, I did I run that. One. I think I I started behind you. I finished a lot further behind you by the end of it. <laughs> that was actually a lot of fun. Um, I haven't raced a sprint car since that. I mean, that's it's been months since I jumped into one, and 
and that was that was a lot of fun. I I had to get the whole feel back to it, but I don't. I, I started I don't know, near the back somewhere, finished fifth. I was up to fourth, but I found a way to hit the wall at the end. But yeah, I, yeah. it was all right. Um, but yeah, I mean that that was fun. Something different for up uh, uh, yep. two o'clock in the afternoon. I wasn't on there by the way. I was working. Of course. You, yeah. Hopefully you're you're Man. still working tomorrow when the four tens run. I plan on. But um, <laughs> Mike is in so much trouble from this interview. Like we're. I know. Yeah. <laughs> what what you'll find out from my wife is she she's not shocked about anything, and she's just used to it at this point. She, like I said, there's there's days where she's like, just go out to the shed and stop. Just leave me alone, please. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> All right, man. Well, we're going to let you go. We, uh, I think we're going to be interviewing uh, Greg Boydell here in a few minutes, but we appreciate you stopping by. I think a lot of people have probably heard your name um, and run into you here or there, but I think it's uh, good, especially being a sponsor, but you've just been kind of involved in a little bit of everything with us, so it's good for everybody to get to know you, and uh, we're certainly glad you stopped by. And I really think you're, you're, you have a pretty natural uh, podcast spot there, so... I'll be looking for you to start yours up here soon. I don't, you can tell us what it'll be yeah. about. <laughs> well, well, we'll see if that actually pans out. But I think this would be, could be fun. I mean, this is kind of the first time I've done it with you, like with you guys. So yeah, it may it's, seem fun. It's a lot easier oh, than, than, yeah. than you think when you start. Yeah. But no, I really truly appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. I got to thank actually you uh, for doing what you did for me with the wraps and stuff. Those look awesome, Preston. They phenomenal wraps. Um, everybody. I mean, I so many people to thank. I, crazy but we have a lot of fun with it and hopefully continue the process absolutely absolutely see you on the track buddy all right sounds good guys take it easy man. Yeah, take care and uh it was, it was great to finally uh, catch up with mike schultz uh he's been a, a stalwart member of the the league and a great sponsor and supporter uh uh, for quite a while now, so it was great to talk to him. The interesting thing was that you know we're a couple of days between um, when we recorded that and when we're recording now. And uh, uh, there was a post on Facebook the next day. He had a uh, a guy he was uh, you know fulfilling his uh, bucket wish and uh, setting up a mini stock in the garage in the other in the back half of that building. So uh, uh, busy boy out in the barn. That's or in the shed. Oh, I didn't see that. That's uh, that's pretty cool. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know uh, anything but, about that. Looked like he was making a buddy's dream come true. So uh, kudos to Mike for that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you have that's to awesome. check it out. Yeah, so I, I actually uh, also wanted to go back and, and just address something you said earlier. You were talking about, you know, it's the new year and everything. And I just wanted to point out, as, as crummy a year as 2020 has been, for our league, it was incredible. We've grown leaps and bounds, met lots of new people. Um, so 2021 obviously looks very bright. But I, I just wanted to point out, you know, how... And maybe some of the things going on in the world helped a little bit push people our direction. Yep. But yep. Uh, it's I, I'm I'm not sorry to see 2020 go, but I, I think some good things came out of it for sure. Yeah, I gotta agree, especially from the iRacing racing thing. I mean, iRacing racing was my savior. It uh, you know the the whole whole social interaction stuff, we're like what we're doing right now, and and all the chat in uh, in the uh, Discord rooms. I mean, we, you know, it kept you laughing, it kept you smiling. <laughs> Sometimes everybody shared their frustrations. But um, it, it was a place to vent or at least uh, connect with people and um, a lot of value there. And, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, with the whole downside of COVID, but one of the upsides was iRacing exploded and yeah. uh, so did our league and uh, and continues to. We'll get into that in a few minutes. I wanted to just uh, touch on that a bit, too. But uh, and we got uh, Iron Man Greg Boydell coming up. But that's a great moniker, man. He should have that across the front of his uh, wing. He should... Get a new wrap done with Iron Man on the front. Well, he's not going to be happy to hear that either because I'm pretty sure he just got new wraps too. So it looks like uh, <laughs> Bra Braden's going to have to go back and uh, yeah. make some updates for him. Yeah, yeah. But it, he should have it on there because he's definitely our Iron Man. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, lots of uh, lots of stuff happening in the league. It's uh, it, It's been great. Um, I'm taking my notes from the other night, and I'm just trying to remember what I was wanting to talk about with that. But I think we were just coming off the Elite in the Street stocks um, uh, before that show, and great broadcast. And uh, and actually, that I guess that leads me into the next thing. We, what we found out after the fact was um, that uh, Joe White, OSRN, uh, who's Joe's been with us 
probably close to a year now. Uh, but Joe, um, that that broadcast uh, of the uh, street stocks and the uh, elite was also broadcast on iRacing.com. So that's a huge breakthrough for Joe, and I think Joe's been on there before, but uh, you know he's now able to uh, post. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure how all the you know mechanics of that works, but it sounds like all of our Wednesday races will be on iRacing.com, and um, I think we were discussing this this morning. Like there's been, uh, you know, we we amalgamated all those uh, divisions into the unlimited and said, you know, you need to register because we've got like. I think it's 85 guys in the unlimited division who haven't gone through the process. So they haven't been assigned a number. Um, Bill Calder is just working feverishly now uh, tracking all that down. And uh, so now you have to apply through the website. And um, uh, there is no open invitation. So, uh, you know, that caused us a bit of grief in a few instances where a few cowboys got in or as, as... and he called them cancer sticks, and uh, you know. So we'll, uh, but but now we've got the process back down where you know Bill Calder, vice president of recruiting. I mean that is, he does a phenomenal job on that, and uh, now they'll they'll all come through the process. So we saw this bump in people um, applying, but I was looking at the names, and they're not the guys that are already in the league, and I'm thinking it's it's uh, Joe getting this on iRacing.com has driven more guys. Yeah. We just had a guy, I was just pointing out this morning, um, uh, his name's Gray, I can't, I'm trying to Ryan Gray, I, I, forgive me for not knowing the name, but he's um, he's up there with uh, Dylan Westbrook. Dylan Westbrook was the Rookie of the Year for the ASCS 360s. Um, Gray is the Rookie of the Year for the ASCS Midgets, and he just uh, signed on, so that's uh, that's exciting. And uh, but, but we're getting lots of guys, in fact, he's, yeah, lots of guys, some of the guys the Roadrunners, I think he's catching up with the guys that have already sort of joined and we didn't have their info. But um, So that's kind of got corralled, and I think it should eliminate some of the um, sideshows we've seen, uh, you know. And uh, we've got a great league, and, you know, like you, I think you had said in a you note know, that we have a great culture, and we don't want to mess with that. So um, bringing these guys through, making sure they do, are familiar with rules and regulations before they get on the track, because that's where the issues started. Was they, they, if they would have read the rules, there wouldn't have been issues. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And and I, I think a lot of guys see that, and it's, uh, you know, they read through a little bit of it, and it's like, oh yeah, that just makes sense, and they just move past it. But it, it really does. If you, even even if you're an experienced racer with us, I would, you know, you've been doing it for a while, you know the rules, you need to know. I would still recommend going through it because it's it's helpful. It'll it'll you know guide you to the right places. Because I think we even have some people like that we're familiar with the protest system, which has been updated now. We've talked about that. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, still send an email, which, you know, it, it's all right. We understand there's a learning curve, when, especially when you've been doing it one way for a while. But yeah. uh, just just re- glance into it because we do update it. You know, we update it each season, which I know. Yes, and, and that's not a quick process. Roger pretty much, ha- you know, goes through and changes the document and after we discuss what we'll change it to. And, um, that takes time, so it's a good thing to go through and just read it again. Um, go, going back just a little bit, uh, I'm just curious. I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to Joe about it, but as far as how, how did we end up on iRacing.com? Did they approach him? Did he approach iRacing? How, how, do we know how that started? I don't know a lot. I think he. I think there's a process you have to go through to be approved, and uh, I think Joe has done that. Um, it sounds like he had he had he had that approval before in the past and I guess just let it slide or I I don't know. Well, you know what? We have to bring Joe on hopefully next week and uh, he can explain all that. (laughs) Joe's, Joe's a great guy to to talk to. So he'd be a great interview and we've been meaning to get him on for a while. So now the timing is perfect. Yeah. We'll get Joe on and uh, maybe he can explain that, but it's a huge, it's a huge feather in his cap and uh, we're definitely beneficiaries of, of that. And and just to uh, uh, emphasize too, we will still be on GeForce TV. It's just one more outlet, one more, um, a whole new um, uh, group of, uh, of people that uh, you know we're reaching out to. So uh, it, yeah. it, it, it's a win-win. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's it's pretty cool. And and I'd be interested to know from the other sponsors because I you know I, I know they mentioned Epsilon on that 
on the broadcast, and I noticed between Wednesday night and really, I guess this morning, I haven't seen any this morning, I got a bunch of new likes on my Facebook page, and um, it's just, it's, that's happened before, what seemingly kind of randomly, and I never really could put any, but this seems to have an, an actual attachment to that, and I'm interested to know if any of our other sponsors have seen a bump yep. um, in traffic especially, or anything. Especially the other app companies, because we've got uh, two or three other rap companies that are sponsoring our, our division. So they're, and, and, and kudos to our broadcast teams. Um, they all do a great job of promoting our sponsors and, uh, you know, making awareness. So uh, they've been doing, they've been doing a bang up job. And, uh, uh, and, and you know what, that's, that's not an easy thing. Like I gave them a broadcast script. I mean, there's a lot of sponsors to cover and we've tried to do it. And without them losing their, uh, their feel or their, their unique, uh, you know, delivery. Uh, so it's not just a, you know, just, you're just not reading from a script. Right. It's just got a guideline as we call it, but, but they're doing a great job of keeping the action covered, but, um, you know, getting the love out to all our sponsors and, uh, the shows I've been watching lately from, from both our broadcasters has, has been spectacular. And, and, uh, starting next Friday, we've got fast track, you know, they did one show, um, and there was a, a few, uh, you know, trips and stuff, but it was the first time out, and uh, it's a relative new guy. Um, but Fast Track Racing will be doing the prolates on Friday, and uh, and and you know he he's ready to step up his game. So uh, you know, that's what we're about, community, and we'll we'll uh, grow with him. So yeah, but yeah, but yeah it's it, it's been great. It's been you know the broadcasts have been uh, top notch, and uh, I put them up against anybody. And um, the the racing is the racing this season is, you know, has really improved. Uh, it's some there's speak some for yourself. Racing. <laughs> no, I'm talking. I'm talking as promoter. I'm yeah, as promoter. I, know, I know. I'm just slumping <laughs> terrible, and I'm bitter about it. Yeah, but but the uh, yeah, but the racing, the broadcast, like what people are. I I I've, I've been watching broadcasts that like this is spectacular. We've had like five wide going in the yeah. in a, the street stock and and four wide at least with with uh, the sprint cars and it's just like and they're going lap after lap after lap. I I've, I've read a number of threads where you know guys are going three wide for you know like numbers of laps without any incidents. It's just the 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 uh, skill levels of our guys is just uh, improved and um, we have. We've always had great drivers, but now we have more of them. So it's uh, no, it, it's it's an exciting time of the time for sure. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, I I'm I'm quite frankly not thrilled with the uh, the or my abilities in the big block modifieds, but that series I think is another one where you know it's already big, but it's just going to get bigger yeah. and bigger. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's a lot of cool stuff going on. Oh, for sure, and uh, yeah, all this new blood coming in and. And fairly significant, you know, uh, I rating. So there's a, a bunch that uh, can't qualify for the Monday night league, but um, all the rest are open to them. And uh, uh, there's going to be some, you know, there's going to be some challenges. And, uh, well, as, you know, particularly guys like you who are like at the top and uh, not dominant, but you're always at the top, you know, you're always in around that top 10 or whatever, you're going to see some new challenges coming. And I, I, I've seen that in the street stock and, uh, um, and I think we're going to start seeing it in the elite too. Um, we need to find a better way of, uh, getting those qualifier races populated with new blood. Um, but, uh, but the elite series itself, top quality guys. And you know what? It, it, I know I'm rambling here, but, um, it says a lot for our, our Monday night league in that I was looking the other day, I think what there's 37 drivers in elite. And all but eight of them have come out of Renegades and, and out of uh, that division. So, like, those guys are top-notch. You know, it's um, and it's only going to get better. We've got guys from Australia, New Zealand. Um, they're showing up, and they're putting on a show. And, and they're great guys, great racers. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's getting better all the time. Yeah. Yeah, well, and, and there, while we're, I know what you're saying, it's probably... Um, exposure too, right? So a lot of our guys are coming from elite. I think what and uh, to populate those qualifier races, maybe if we can 
amp it up now that we have Elite that's being broadcast on iRacing.com. Maybe we do like a little ad read to advertise the qualifying yeah. series. I think that's that could a, work well. That's great. Well, uh, yeah, we'll have to talk to Joel and Doug about that because uh, that's that's a great idea. That's So this is how we brainstorm. And, yeah, uh, you're, I was getting ready to say, we're starting to do executive here. stuff on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. So maybe... Maybe we should uh, start uh, start heading over to to Greg. Yeah, so we've got uh, we got Greg. I just the other um, I just trying to see my notes here. Uh, no, the only thing I just wanted to reiterate is there's about um, seventy five guys in unlimited with nine hundred series numbers, which yeah, yeah. means they have not gone through the process. You need to go to uh, gforcerl.com. Uh, right at the top, it's uh, register or apply or apply or register, um, and fill that out because we need we need to get you assigned. What what's going to happen in about two weeks is we will not accept the 900 number. Anybody new coming in is they go through the process, they get assigned the number, they come in the league. Uh, these guys, it was because we were trying to grow it so fast. Uh, but uh, we will not allow 900 series numbers in the races in a couple of weeks. So you do need to register or you won't be racing. So, uh, uh, yep. And, and so that, yeah, uh, I'll shut up now. No, no, you're, you're fine. But I know, uh, I know we spent quite a bit of time talking to Mike and, and we got a yes. uh, long interview with, again, with the Iron Man here. So uh, yep. we're, we're going to go it's ahead. Great. And, yeah. Two great interviews. Yeah, they, they really were. And I, they were two guys that have been around the league for a while and we, you know, just hadn't had a chance to really catch up. So I was glad we were able to, it's almost like a throwback episode here today. So, um, yep. yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead. Go ahead. Well, one last thing is I'm really hoping, you know, with a whole new year and a whole new fresh outlook that we'll get Joe Backus on the show. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> my hopes aren't high, but, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I don't know. I don't, I, Joe, Joe, uh, is, he's a slippery, slippery guy. Yeah. You, you gotta, he did. Definitely. You got to play your cards just right. So maybe we'll maybe we'll get lucky in 2021. Maybe we'll get lucky in 2021. Yep. We'll see you soon. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and close with the interview with Greg here. So we appreciate everybody watching. Please stick around. Um, Greg Greg's got some real good stories that he uh, shared with us, and some that he probably didn't have time to. So uh, we'll talk to Greg and everybody. Uh, we'll go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any outtakes this week? Just. So people stick around for those, or you, you know, you know what? I can't I, remember. I think we have a brief one with Greg. Maybe I don't know if I caught it or not. So uh, okay, yeah, th- we do. Yeah. If 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 you're watching this now, but don't typically stay to the end, um, there are outtakes at the end, typically. Yeah. Um, not not always right. terribly Maybe. hilarious, but we we throw well, our stuff in there. The best part of our segment of the show, anyways. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I figure this will be a good episode because this is probably the least we've talked in a while. But anyway, yeah. let's go talk to Greg. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll uh, see happy you back new here year. next week. And yeah, happy new year. Uh, health and happiness to everybody in 2021. For sure. And we're here with a very special guest uh, t- tonight or this morning or whatever. whenever you're watching this. Uh, Greg Boydell, G.J. Boydell. Uh, Greg, has, he precedes the league. Um, uh, we go back, uh, back to, I can't remember where we were racing, but we were the Ashwikan Posse, and it was me and Greg and uh, Chad Cote and uh, Blake Nutley Butler, and uh, that's before the league started. So uh, we've gone back quite a ways. How you doing, Greg? I'm doing good, Roger. Preston. Uh, um, yeah, we got this thing going about three years ago. Um, and it was, it was actually Adam Ross came to me about going on the sim and I bought a small computer and got myself going and a cheap, uh, cheap wheel and pedals and a folding dining room table and, you know, put the monitor on the coffee table in the living room and away we went. So, but it wasn't long before, like everybody else, once you're into it, (laughs) you want to, I mean, that, that takes money but the thought is there pretty quick yeah that's a that's a never-ending thing it's you there's always something to upgrade and when you're when you when you're not sure what the next one is you go looking for it but i i remember when the league first started i think i think you sent us a picture of your your setup and uh it's and on, you, on you, the web. and yeah you were you were a ways away from your monitor and then i remember not that long ago seeing the video of your 
your the the room you set up with the lights and you got some some race parts hanging around so you've you've had a definitely a, a major upgrade in the past little while yeah yeah well once i got into it um i had an old bedroom in the basement and i thought heck this is it we got a nice oval gloss table uh bought the new computer new uh pedals and i thought oh let's have some fun with it you know it's covid uh Unfortunately, I lost my job, so I had the time to do stuff, and it really wasn't that expensive. So, and all the car parts that you see in the room, and a lot of the pictures were actually um, from the children's auction at us weekend that they do every Christmas, and there's an open bid on parts. So, like all the engine hood covers and uh, front wings that are signed, yeah, the money went to the kids, and... Uh, Basically, what we do around here is, rather than having Christmas for ourselves, we have decided to donate money to other causes. And the Kids Fund out there has, has always been close to my heart. They're good people, and they deserve it. That's excellent. Yeah, so, uh, Greg doesn't just beat me on the track. He beats me in the auction, because he's outbid me on a couple of those <laughs> <laughs> cool parts. <laughs> But yeah, I've got. So I, I was thinking at the beginning of the interview, I wasn't sure you're either in a strip bar or in your uh, racing room. So I'm not in your room. <laughs> hey, I can, I can make it worse because actually the LED lights are uh, synced up to my computer, so that when I put music on or something, um, yeah, I can put it on and the lights are yeah they're synced to music and it looks pretty cool oh. in here. What would be cooler, Greg, is uh, if you had them set up like that. Ashwika has, if, if people haven't seen, their their lighting system is absolutely the best. Like every pole on the fence has a strip of LED, so it, you can't be anywhere in the track and not see it. But I'm thinking that it would be so cool to have that whole room flashing yellow or green or, or, or red or whatever. Um, yeah, uh, don't tell Glenn that I stole his idea, okay? Uh, <laughs> that's actually where I picked the idea up from, and um, I can actually set it up that way. I didn't want to use uh, the greener that while I was talking to you guys because it, it goes pretty dark. But I actually, yeah, I can set them up that way. It's uh, it's a lot of fun, and like I said, it's not that expensive. You uh, just go on Amazon, and I think uh, each light set was about thirty or forty bucks, and I've used what four of them so cool. and they just pass together yeah. you can make any pattern you want so hmm. yeah it's a lot of yeah fun. that's that's very cool the um yeah so going back to your original rig i mean you were at it's basically a uh a, a, a folding table like a, a tv table uh, you're sitting on the couch back from that but your monitor was your TV, which was across the living room. Like, and you were still racing like competitively. And I have no idea how you did that. No idea at all. Um, you know, you got these guys. I, I was getting into triples, and you know, guys who got VR, but you know, guys are getting these big screens and, and all these tight angles, and talking about FOV, and you got to be like, the, the, you know, the monitor should be right up against the wheel. And here's Greg driving with a TV across the room. It was just. Uh, it was amazing, really. So, uh, kudos to you. Do you think you could go back to it now? Like, do you think you could do as well as you did before? Now that you've, well, you've moved I'm, around, I'm, I'm still on a single monitor. Um, what I did was this monitor here is a 27 inch flat screen, and um, basically I drive by listening to the spotter. I use that sim spotter. Um, you know, I know guys that are on teams, they, they have their own spotters and Discord and stuff, and I've, I've done that route, and it works. But well, it depends, find... who it depends who the spotter is, Greg. If it's me, you're better off with the eye racing spotter. You'll be much better off. <laughs> T Terry Landis is going to think I paid you to say that after tonight, too. Just for the record, <laughs> I, I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, like even tonight in the, at the race at Lanier, in the elite race, um, I ran a ton of laps, three wide in the middle. And yep. just by listening to the spotter, um, I don't think, uh, you know, cross your fingers and hope to die, but I don't think I touched anybody. And like I said, we, we ran several laps, three wide around that. 
when it was no, you know what it, I, I just watched that broadcast and um it was four and five white it was just you know you, yeah. you you go from the street stocks who are going four and five white but then you go to the sprint this flying four or five it, it was it's incredible racing that's for sure and uh yeah a great division but I know, you know, I got to thank you a little bit because it was you uh, going to the uh, V3 pedals convinced me uh, that, that that was the move to do it. I've never looked back since then. So they, they are phenomenal. They really do help. I actually got uh, that idea from uh, our good friend uh, Rick Scott. Yep. Rick had him, and I'd been out to see Rick actually to, to pick up a couple of. Uh, Engine covers I'd won, and uh, probably Rick outbid Roger on this. Well, I yeah. I got them and I tried them out and I went, wow, night and day difference from the, yeah. the G19 pedals. Yeah, and I thought this is a must do. So yeah, it, it it really makes a difference, and I think 99% of the guys will tell you the same thing. Yeah, you know, I th- that, that these yeah. are awesome. I think you're right. Roger and I have both switched to them now too. Um, just it 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 somehow makes it makes it you, you can use the brake effectively with with these pedals where with the 920 or I had G27 pedals which aren't a whole lot different. Um, it, it, it's just you, it's hit or miss whether you're going to give it too much brake or not, and it really makes a big difference. With Fanatec or Fanatic, however you pronounce it, they're going to have to start sending us a check because every every time we bring somebody on here that switched any of their equipment, they'll tell you. That it's yeah. the best stuff. Now I know there's some some higher end brands out there. We were talking about um, some pedals. You know I can't pronounce it. it's. Husenfeld or Husenfeld or whatever it is. There's a lot of other letters in there that that are silent. But yeah. <laughs> uh, but but I mean I know they're nice, but they're too grand, right? I mean you're spending a lot of money on those pedals. So for the value you get from from Fanatec products, you're not going to beat it. Like, I mean, and they they have a wide variety of stuff you can pick from too, and that helps. Yeah, and uh, eventually the wheel will get changed over too. Um, I mean, debating in the end uh, whether it's going to be about driven or direct drive. Um, I mean, pretty well everybody knows that what we were watching during spring and summer on television, uh, both in dirt and pavement races, um, those guys were all using direct drive wheels. There wasn't one guy that was not using direct drive. And a lot of those rigs were put together within a week. They basically called guys up and said, hey, do you want to race? Do you want to do this? And they had the rig in the house and installed and running, mm-hmm. you know, the next day. Thing. Um, yeah. But hey, those, those are public privileges, right? So um, hats off to them. But if anybody thinks that they were racing on a G27 or G920 wheel, uh, no, no. Yeah. Timmy Hill's the only yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, you know, um, and I've said this before too. You know, Ty Majeski, the all-time highest uh, I rating on uh, in I racing. Uh, I saw one time on a post he put up, and he was he had a G27 wheel and a laptop in a hotel room, and somebody said, "Yeah, but what do you have back home?" And he said, "This is all I use: it's a laptop and a G27." And he has the highest I rating. So you know, like the equipment certainly helps the experience and i and i think it makes you a better driver but i always got a kick out of that uh, um uh oh, geez I'm, I'm missing his name again uh one of the guys in the the big the guy that's won three of the nascar uh, series um you know he, up until all the year and up until the, it blew up and everybody got new equipment he was running with a g27 and a, and a homemade uh box patched together so um you know it, it but it, but at the same time, I know it's helped my driving, and and it certainly helps the immersion effect and all that stuff as well. I th- I think where it makes a difference is with with better equipment, you can spend less time to get to a certain result. Where with where yeah. if you're yeah. if you're gonna stay on a G twenty seven or I mean there's even some we're we're using G uh, the G Logitech stuff as the low end. There's lower end stuff than that really that just not a lot of people yeah. use. You can still get good on those things. It just takes a lot longer to practice and and a lot more precision. It can be done. It's just much more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think where it really shows up, too, is on pavement. Um, like, I, I run a little bit of oval stuff with you guys. 
and uh, I run once in a while some GP3 and GTE stuff. Uh, road courses, you really notice it, especially what Preston said with the braking. Uh, because on road courses, your, your braking zones are really, really precise. <clears throat> um, switching gears here for a minute, just want to talk about the, the other exciting part that you uh, you have in your life is in the summer. Uh, turn two cameramen for the uh, speaking stream team, GeForce TV. Tell us a little bit about that, how long you've been doing it, and how all that got started. That actually got started uh, 10 years ago. Um, I'd been sitting on the grandstand side for 14 years and had a photography contest. So they had two monthly prizes plus an overall. So I took some shots and put them in, um, and I ended up winning two monthly prizes plus the overall. So I go in the end of the season, Canadian Sprint Car Nationals, collect my, my goodies and, and my tickets and stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it was great. It was awesome. And but I thought nothing of it. I thought it ended there. <clears throat> well, the next March or early April, I get a text from Glenn Sires. And it says, do you want to come and videotape me and my partner, who at the time was uh, Keith Dempster? And I thought it was one of these NASCAR things. I thought it was a joke. I thought, what is Glenn Sires doing getting a hold of me? Well, he ended up actually having to call me so that I would believe him. <laughs> so the, the first five years, I stood up on that deck coming out of turn two, and I basically videotaped uh, Glenn and, uh, and Keith Dempster. And then that happened for five years. And five years ago, they came to me and said, okay, we want to start streaming. Do you want to be a part of it? And I was like, heck yeah, sure, let's go. If we're going to grow this, let's start and do it. And, you know, as they say, the rest is kind of history. Um, I mean, we just keep on growing. And this year, you know, unfortunately, COVID has had a lot of negative impacts, especially on racing. But... Um, we were given an opportunity to put the product out there and Clinton and then Adam Ross kind of led the way with our group and we said okay let's do this uh, they had sponsors that came on board um, right away and put up money for us to go and do these shows and basically we're a production and camera crew that's totally mobile so kind of a one of a kind that way um, yeah, but we, we've had nothing but positive reviews. Um, tracks have even asked us, apparently, to go back next year, even if they're loud fans. So it was that much of a hit. So, and, and you know, we, we take a lot of pride in what we do. Um, you know, people have compared us to Dirt Fusion and Flow Racing, and, you know, even the odd person says we're comparable to Fox Sports, and I'm not quite sure about that, but... You know, we do the best we can, and the drivers love it. The fans at home love it. So, yeah, we're going to keep it going. Well, it, it definitely makes sense. I mean, I, you think about it. I, obviously, you know, from a league perspective, I have a, a an interest in what goes on in Oshawa and Speedway. But I, I watch some of those races that I would have I would have not even known about otherwise much less been able to actually just sit down and, and watch on a Saturday evening or whatever. It it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, for a long time, it's even in pro sports, they black out events because they want people to go there. But you're missing an entire market of people that aren't local to you because people love local dirt track racing, even if it's not local to them, or even asphalt racing. That local Friday, Saturday night racing is awesome, and it doesn't necessarily matter if the track is 30 minutes down the road. I know, yeah. uh, you know, like, yeah, Clint has talked about that before, uh, where, you know, people said they were crazy because uh, the fans won't come, but the fans do come, and and now they've got, you know, it's, it's subscription-free, so, like, you can watch all this free. They've got, like, I think 8,000 subscribers. they got people from Australia, all England, all around the world watching uh, and, and becoming aware of Ash Weekend, and local fans becoming aware of Ash Weekend that may never have gone and will start going, so... Uh, and their sponsors get lots of love and coverage. That was their their idea that, you know, well, our, our sponsors will get even more exposure by doing this. So 
it was a great model, and uh, I, and I agree with you, Greg. I think um, it rivals uh, Map TV when they were around and uh, Flow Sports. It's every bit as good as all of those, and uh, you guys do a bang up job. And it was great this summer. Uh, you know, when you guys were traveling, you know, last weekend was shut down for the for the season, but you guys went out and did all this remote stuff, and uh, people could still see live racing, and it was uh, it was great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, and um, th there was a bit of a fear that um, we were going to lose fans out of the stands by giving away what we have for free and not charging for it. And basically that was when Clinton and, and Adam said, you know what, um, heck with it, we're going to do it, and we're going to see how it goes. Um, but what both you and Preston have said has what's come true. It has actually brought fans that have never seen dirt racing um, over to dirt and vice versa. There's a lot of dirt fans now that I can probably well guarantee you they're going to go and take in a, a show or two at Flamborough or out at Jacasa that may not have done that before. Um, and I think total this summer I saw 22 or 23 different classes of race cars. Um, which, you know, if you told me that as a kid, I would have gone, yeah, right, okay. But to see that many different types, I'm going to choose two, three, maybe four more classes that I haven't seen, and I now enjoy the heck out of Like, for me, I, I used to go to Flamborough and Cuba back in the 70s, right? So some of the drivers that are now in that hobby class um, on the pavement side, you know, some of those guys are, they're over 60, I'll, I'll just say that. And um, they're out there and they're pounding it. And that hobby class, they're all steel cars and they go. You know, I, I was shocked. So that's a class that I now enjoy back on pavement. Um, the sportsman thing, we, we get sportsmen up here once or twice, uh, usually at our sleeping. But now, Next summer, they're going to bring back the big box, I believe, July 5th or 6th. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So Yeah, I will know, be you, too. No. Yeah, I mean, you got to have an open mind through this whole thing. Um, you can't be afraid to put yourself out there and try something new. We were lucky. It worked. Um, you know, I mean, we, we, all, we had our moments. Um, we get on each other's case, we yell, we scream, we curse. Um, but at Sounds the end like of the night... Force. Yeah. <laughs> You're preaching but... to the choir, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally, I have in my left ear uh, an MP3 player with uh, 88.1 FM so I can hear the announcing stuff. Then I have a headset on with microphone that I'm listening to our production guy literally call my shots. So is that, yeah, Spencer, I'm, I'm, is that Spencer in that case too? Yeah, that's Spencer. Is that Spencer? Yeah. 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 And we got to give Spencer. a big shout out. Spencer is just an awesome guy. And, uh, our broadcasts and that, whenever there's issues, he is right on it. Uh, you know, and, uh, get some fixed turnaround time. Absolutely amazing. Just a big shout out to him. He's, he's been great for our league, but yeah, as a producer, he does a great job too, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The kid, the kid works his rear end off. And he's done a lot of good work to basically start with nothing five years ago and build it up into what it is now and be able to make us totally portable um, is really something amazing. And I know for a fact that there have been other stations out there looking at what we've done. And I know that there's some pretty yep. cool stuff yep. possibly coming in the future for that. So oh, we're I, excited I would, about that. I don't want to give any secrets away. <laughs> no, you better not. We better. So we should, we should change gears here um, because the other thing, I mean, you, you're not only one of the old, like long, uh, not old. Uh oh. Long, uh oh. Uh, no. Uh -oh. Uh, oldest members, like long, long activity. Like you, you, you preceded uh, the league actually. And, um, but you were also, uh, I think you made last season 101 races. In our league, is that right? One hundred and one, yeah. I think it was. 
it was it was something like that. Um, obviously, you're letting people know I have way too much uh, time on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> what better way was, to spend it? Well, you know, I, I had the rig, and when COVID happened and uh, my job became redundant, I decided to build this room down here, and I thought, okay, I'm going to put some put some money into the computer, get it up and going better. So it, it, there was a natural progression, and I thought, okay, what's a better way to feel comfortable than to race more leagues? So... And I mean, you you guys have grown over the three years. I mean, you're you're triple or quadruple the size that you originally started with. So, yeah, I mean, why not? And, and for the most part, everybody's good, clean driving out there. Uh, you know, um, you know, as they say, things happen. But for the most part, yeah, it's a good group of people. Um, it, there's a little bit of socializing. It goes on in Discord and stuff. Um, you know, and with people being locked down, that's it's more important than what people realize. Um, because we can't go out in public and socialize, this is the Absolutely. new way of social. Is what yep. we're doing now on video or on voice. Yeah. And you, you get to learn what's going on around you. Uh, for us, the people in the U.S. are important, and around the world. Um, just a quick note on, on the G-Force thing. Two years ago at Canadian Sprint Car Nationals, we had 65,000 views. And it got back to us that night that there were actually Army personnel in Iraq and Iran up in the middle of the night watching on a big screen. And they, they weren't allowed to message us in any way due to security. But it did get back to us that they were watching. And when they announced that, the entire place just went berserk. It was so cool to see the respect out for that. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, that yeah. is cool. That's really awesome. I didn't know about that. So that's, uh, that's a cool, cool fact. Uh, I wasn't aware of that. So, um, and, and, sure, I, and the Canadian Nationals, are, people need to get up for it. Because what was the car count two years ago? 85 cars, something like that, sprint cars? Yeah, yeah, it was 85 and 90 cars. Yeah. Yeah. You get the yeah. best guys in North America. It, it, it's a spectacular show. For sure, we got to get a, a few get togethers, uh, hopefully this summer. And, uh, you know, we'll uh, maybe we'll get, you know, we'll get 100 members out. And we'll all get up, climb the stairs, stand up on the platform with you together on turn two. You might want to check the weight <laughs> capacity then. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm like six by eight or six by ten up there. Yeah. So we'll take turns then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll bug Glenn and we'll get him to get like eight more scissor lifts. And there you put go. Them on pair <laughs> there stuff. you go. Yeah, yeah. Actually, what we could do is uh, rent out the new building. It's in turn three. It's still being built. Um, yeah, that's it's gonna, gonna be spectacular. Have a, they're gonna have three or four VIP suites upstairs. Uh, and, a, and a deck outside. Downstairs is going to be uh, some offices. And out the back of those offices are going to be, I think, like three or four garage areas um, attached to it. So a yeah. huge, huge building. Um, and also next summer, when people show up, um, they won't have to use their data on their phone or tablet. Um, so when we show a replay, there's now like a 60 or 80 foot Wi-Fi tower which should be up and going. You'll be able to sit in the stands, tune in, and run it off that Wi-Fi. And you'll be able to I basically was, uh, see. That, so that's what I would do. Um, when I, 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 just down from the broadcasters, uh, I start finish line, and uh, I had uh, my two, I had two iPhones going, one with um, uh, the timing and all that stuff. And uh, the other one with the broadcast, so I could watch the replays. It was awesome. You kids and your technology. So that's, yeah, that's great. Uh, so, so that's awesome. That uh, oh, and I had a headset on listening to the to the guys call the race. So it uh, it was a, a great setup. But yeah, that's that's awesome if they're gonna have a wi Wi Fi there. Yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, Glenn is just uh, he's gone. 
I mean, he, he never stopped putting out. Um, and Glenn's number one concern has always been the race fan. Um, and, and he's come to me several times, you know, and he'll be like, Greg, what can I do different? You know, give me, give me an idea. What do the fans really want? You know, and it's really hard is, you know, 25 years next year. And so look at what he had 25 years ago to what he has now. I mean, it's just phenomenal. And, and it'll keep going. It'll keep growing. You know, um, you know, and, and more and more people keep showing up. Um, so he keeps expanding so the facility. We need, yeah, he's a phenomenal guy. We need to get going, but. Maybe we should close just yeah. a story that will tell about just what kind of guy Glenn is. is tell, tell us a story about what he did for you, uh, you know, with the uh, going down south. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Back in 2014, I, uh, we decided to go down to Charlotte for the uh, World Finals. So I, I went to Glenn and I said, hey, we're going to go down and watch your race. Glenn had decided to put the 410 in the, the car and do his thing. And uh, he says to me, uh, come on in the house for a second. I want to talk to you. And I always tell people jokingly, there's only two reasons you go on Glenn's house. It's either really, really good or really, really bad. Okay? Uh, that's the discipline room. Um, so we go in there and we sit down. Glenn picks up the phone. And, and I'm looking at my wife and I'm like, well, that's kind of rude. So he puts the phone down. He says, what are you going to do during the day? I said, go visit some race shops. You know, this is the area. And he goes, oh, good. He says, uh, by the way, you're going through uh, Stuart Haas Racing. I was like, I'm what? So, yeah. Um, I get down there and there were contacts and went on the inside tour of uh, Stuart Haas. Um you know, he, he does stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> two years later, went down to Daytona. Told him, you know, didn't go down. Then he ends up making the phone calls. And, you know, here I am, uh, hit side for, you know, eight, nine days at Daytona. Uh, don't know if I could go back there now and sit in the grandstands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, no. Uh, no, he's a class, he's a class act for sure. Well, it's a whole different world. And um, Glenn realizes that when I go to these race tracks, and you know I'm I'm wearing us weekend stuff, and I'm talking to people and I'm using his name, that I'm a positive person that way, and you know, and I'm not going to bash the name around that everything is about respect, and now more than ever everything is about respect. You know, um, and we're not going to go down there and get drunk and make a fool of ourselves in front of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. That's that's not how I work. Um, you know, and again, if you're you're good to people and you're polite, then you're going to get the respect back. Uh, one funny thing happened at Daytona real quick. Uh, that was the year Rico Abreu ran the truck series, and he had been in the big one. So I went down walking through the pits, and it's in the dark, and he comes walking around the corner on his cell phone. He almost walked into me. So I knelt down. I had a great big sticker on my camera bag that said, I was weakened. So I stopped, and I said, Rico, you know Glenn Styers? He goes, yeah, I, I talked to Glenn at Chili Bowl a couple times. So I said, to him, Rico, what would you think of bringing your 360 car up here to us weekend and racing? And he looked at me, and he says, yeah, I'd, you know, I'd really like to do that. So I said to him, so if I get a hold of Glenn right now and says Rico Abreu wants to come and race, you're in. And he looked at me straight in the eye and he goes, yeah, man, I'd love to do that. Well, two years later, <laughs> guess who shows up? <laughs> so, you know, you, you put yourself out there once in a while, sure, you can get shot down. You know, you can you can ask Clinton that. You know, like, the guy, the guy works his rear end off to get those sponsors and stuff. You know, and there's an old saying that for every one you get, there's probably ten that said no. That's right. Yep. And, and yep. you got to get used to it, but you got to keep plodding. But, you know, I don't, I don't mind talking to these guys. I'm not, 
starstruck when I go down there. You know, you see guys wandering around with binders trying to get autographs in the pit stalls and stuff. And, yeah, you know what? They're kind of in the way. Because during practice time, they're they're busy, those guys. They're working on cars. They're talking to crew chiefs. They're, you know, a huge exchange of information goes on. So, yeah, you don't, you don't want to get in their way. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, I don't want to cut it off. We could talk all night here, but uh, uh, between you and we had Mike Schultz on earlier, uh, and uh, Preston and I haven't even started talking yet, so um, we probably need to to close this one off. But but uh, we have to close with the all important yeah, question yeah. that I oh, ask everybody right. that comes on, and I know I, I'm pretty sure Greg watches these, so he's had time to prep. But Greg, and oh. you can pick whatever division. I know you run several of them. Who, all of them. Well, all of them. You know, 101 races last season. Yeah. Who is your biggest rival in G-Force and Racing Leagues? Uh, my biggest rival, probably probably a couple guys. Um, Jeff Barker and uh, probably Andrew Smith. Uh, really enjoy racing with those two guys. Uh, they're probably two of the cleanest racers out there. Um, our abilities are about the same. So even if we're racing mid-pack or at the back, you know, if we're in a bigger league, yeah. um, we're there, we're close, we know each other's race lines, basically, and and again, we, we give each other the respect and, and the, the race line. So, yeah, I, I would say definitely those are the two biggest. I could see that. And I, I could definitely see that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. For sure. And I mean... Jeff, uh, Jeff puts himself out there for you guys, being an admin, and I think he does a, a hell of a job. You know, um, Absolutely. he keeps people, you know, he, he shoots from the hip, but, you know, if you're on to somebody, he's going to let you know that too. So, yeah, I, I mean, I can tell you that the guys respect Jeff a lot. So. Yep, oh, yep. absolutely. And Andrew, yep. Andrew goes way back with me. Andrew was a mechanic up at Cameron's Karting when I raced in the Rookie Series there for seven or eight years. He goes back that far, and he ended up racing uh, Rotax. Uh, and for anybody who doesn't know that karting track, that is where uh, Robert Wickens grew up karting. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's about 10, 15 minutes from my house. So he used to go up there and teach the kids and stuff before he got into well, even before he moved to Europe and got in the DTM cars, uh, he'd come out and his brother still runs the Canadian national team and builds motors and carts for him, too. So, I am I hearing a cat? I think your cat's hungry. I think it's time to feed the cat. We're going to have to go. Yeah. It's that time. It's 1130. Man, it's yeah. playtime, dude. He, he's like, uh, well, I've got a picture of him up on the old... Uh, Yep. You'll break. Yep. And yep. I thought I was losing it. <laughs> <laughs> now he's my buddy. I've, uh, I've had him from the SPCA for what, 13, 14 years. All 20 pounds of him. <laughs> he's, uh, he's special. He's a cool dude. Well, Greg, yeah, that's awesome. Greg, we really appreciate you coming on, buddy. Roger's right. I think we could probably go for another couple hours yeah. here. You're, you're a fun guy to talk to. We certainly are glad you you know all the stuff you do with our league. It's it's a pleasure racing with you and and seeing you out on the track. So uh, we we look forward to seeing you out there again. Uh, probably uh, I guess tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we'll be out tomorrow for four tens. Um, thanks guys for having me on. Uh, thanks for letting me tell a little bit of my story. Uh, yeah, we we could literally spend probably a day with racing stories, even just local stuff. Um, we're lucky here. We're in a real hot spot of racing in southern Ontario. So, yep. um, and hopefully COVID will, you know, uh, end itself, and we'll get fans back out there too. Uh, we're not we're not gonna know what to do when, the, when everybody's sitting in bleachers again, man. <laughs> it's gonna be crazy out there. But, well, uh, great. Again, uh, thanks. Yeah, I just uh, close by saying I'm sick of seeing your tail tank, and I'm hoping one day I'll see you in my rear view, but I don't know if that'll ever happen. But anyway. <laughs> no, that's great to have you in the league. That's great to have you in the league, and, uh, you know, thanks for uh, 
been a big part of it through since, since its inception. Well, thanks, guys, and and I just you know I want to say to you guys, like I said, you you've grown what three four times the size of what you were, and uh, everything looks like it's going well. Uh, you, you've got huge group of racers now coming literally from all over the world because we're getting some some Australian and New Zealanders there now. So yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Um, I'm I'm sure you have your frustrating moments like we all do. And, <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, keep pushing, keep pushing. That that's that's something I've learned from Clinton. Um, you know, with him being GM, never give up, keep pushing. Uh, you're gonna hit some bumps, and you have hit some bumps, but you've smoothed them out, and things have gotten better. So you know, now like you're up to what, almost 20 leagues. That's that's yeah, just mind blowing. 20. 20. Yeah, yeah, I, know. I, Went I from two to two to twenty. Yeah, so. like I don't see any, uh, monsters of dirt or um, what was it, dirty old bastard. I don't see any of those leagues with the, the kind of numbers that you guys are putting out. So, well, the one thing yeah. I'll leave this in, yes, leave it in closing now that uh, this season we have two hundred and forty races, so we have no idea how many you're going to run this year. But it'll be interesting to do the totals at the end of the season. You, you need a, you need a tracker on the website, just yeah. just, just yeah. to see how many races Greg's run so far. <laughs> It'd be fun. Actually, but, actually, yeah. it's uh, not that hard to track because I print out the schedule for the twelve weeks and then I write down my finishes beside it, so I can. I can pretty well tell you, you idea. know. Yeah, that is a good idea. Yeah, I like that. That's a great yeah. idea, Greg. I think I'll do that. I, this, I'm a this, season I'm count, this season I'm counting my uh, top tens. That's for me. Never mind podiums or any of that shit. I just want to count top tens. <laughs> well, that'd be, Anyways, thanks. that'd be a <laughs> thanks, thanks. Thanks a lot, Greg. It's, it's been great. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Yeah, take care, guys.